Missionary Ridge Tunnel, also known as the White Side Tunnel. Now, the tunnel is 986 feet long, almost the length of three football fields. It was completed in 1858, dedicated in 1859, and was excavated entirely by pick and shovel. As dynamite was not invented until 1867. So, in theory, I guess you could say, this whole construction would go off without a bang. And the tunnel is the reason the line would eventually be abandoned. After World War II, the railway's equipment was becoming much too large to fit into the pre-Civil War era tunnel. Also, the tunnel was single track, while the rest of the line was double track, creating a major bottleneck. A new line would be constructed just to the north, which bypasses Missionary Ridge altogether. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a flashlight out on your cell phone, I do encourage you to have those out at this time to illuminate the tunnel walls as we pass through them. At times, there can be less than a foot of clear between us and these tunnel walls, so good thing we don't have any open windows. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen very, very carefully, tunnel. you'll be able to hear the horn of our locomotive signaling our approach to the tunnel. So we'll listen very, very carefully now. Can y'all hear it from y'all's hands? You probably just heard the horn of our locomotive signaling our approach to the tunnel, meaning that we will be entering the tunnel walls at any moment. As the ridge grows ever closer to our train, we are approaching my favorite time of the day. And that time is tunnel time in Tennessee. That's right, folks, 986 feet of pure history. It is the Missionary Ridge Tunnel. Tunnel time in Tennessee. Well, it is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as we make our way through the Missionary Ridge Tunnel, Everybody keep a lookout for a crystal-like sub substance on the walls of the tunnel. That crystal-like substance is an accumulation of coal cinders since 1858. Over time, they have began to crystallize. So you are currently looking at history in, uh, history in the making. We are rapidly approaching our East Chattanooga Depot. Now, while in East Chattanooga today, we'll have a brief demonstration of our turntable, as well as a behind the scenes look at our back shop. Now, you will also have the option of staying on board the train for the layover. Now, if you do stay on board the train for the layover, you'll be missing quite a bit of the experience we do offer. If you choose to join me off the train, we do have a few brief safety rules we ask you to follow. Rule one is to please stay with the group at all times, as this is a guided tour, so please do not wander off. Rule two is to please do not climb on any of the equipment you may see around the property. I know it can look very fun, but it is very dangerous. Rule three is to please stay on the concrete pathway at all times, so do not wander onto any tracks, gravel, or ballast. And finally, rule four is of course my favorite, to have fun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our East Chattanooga Depot was the original terminal of the East Chattanooga Depot, of our, the Tennessee yeah. Valley Railroad Museum. For the first two decades of our operation, you, you would have boarded the 
train at East Chattanooga and made your way approximately one and a half miles over to Tunnel Boulevard and then reversed back, as the Tunnel Boulevard Bridge would not be completed until 1971. After the completion of the Tunnel Boulevard Bridge, the Southern Railway would donate the remaining mile and a half of track to us here at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum, which would allow, allow us to create our Grand Junction campus. I wish they had after the construction, Grand Junction would become our main museum campus, leaving East Chattanooga to become our industrial end. They need to have one that goes from Atlanta. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we do ask everyone to please remain seated until we come to a complete stop. We'll let you know when it's safe to head to the exits. Once off the train to East Chattanooga, just take a left turn and head on down to our turntable. Once everyone is gathered around our turntable, we will begin our demonstration. So once again, please do remain seated until we come to a complete stop.
three miles of track down into the Husqvarna East Southern Railway. Now folks, we have two options from this point. We can either run our train all the way back to our beautiful Grand Junction Station in reverse, or we can use our turntable and rotate our locomotive 180 degrees. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but I think it sounds like a lot more fun to use our turntable today. What do you guys think? Yeah. I like our enthusiasm. That was so much better than the last group, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Now today we're going to be using our turntable down there. That turntable was built in 1916 by the American Bridge Iron Company based out of Amherst, Pennsylvania. It would have been built for use on the Central Georgia Railway at their locomotive shops in Macon, Georgia. It was used up until 1925. Now can everybody still hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. In 1925, the Central Georgia's equipment was becoming much too large to fit on an 80-foot turntable. So that turntable down there would be relocated to a branch line based out of Cedar Town, Georgia, where it spent the rest of its in service life. When we retired that turntable in the late 1970s, we moved to this location and would receive a $100,000 overhaul. That table's first day of service at TBRM was July 4th, 1982, and we've been using it pretty much every day since then. That turntable down there weighs 80, or is 80 feet long and weighs in at 80 tons. Your locomotive day is being day on number 17, weighs in about 120 tons. Make the overall weight for the crew just around 200 tons. Now, note your thinking. Why is the tour guide standing up on this picnic bench rambling on about the weight? What does that have to matter? Ladies and gentlemen, think about that. That is 200 tons of that locomotive at turntable. I know what you're thinking. Why are you telling me all this? Well, it makes me that turntable would have originally been turned by hand. That is right, folks. It would have been built as an Armstrong table. It would have been sold to poles and pennies for each quarter of our turntable. It would have been taken to at least four people to really turn that turntable around. Now, do I have any volunteers in our audience today? I have one. Thank you, sir. Anybody else want to go down to the range and try to turn the turntable? No, he's choking. Hold on, I've got a better idea. Why don't we make your conductor do it? Yeah. That sound good, everybody? Yeah. Everybody say, everybody look down towards the turntable and say, thank you, Travis. Thank you. Yes. Now Travis is going to be doing all the work today. He's going to be pushing all 200 tons of that turntable with a 25 horsepower electric motor. So don't worry about Travis's back. <laughs> so there he is. He's beginning to turn. You guys like to watch out and explain your locomotive's history. Everybody see okay? All right, your locomotive today is now from Chattanooga and St. Louis Railway number 710. Built here in 1950 by the Electromotive Division of General Motors. It would have been built for the National Chattanooga and St. Louis Railway. It have operated for the National Chattanooga and St. Louis Railway up until 1957. About 65 years ago today, the Little Old National Railroad would purchase the National Chattanooga and St. Louis Railway. That one would begin to operate for the LN. The LN would operate that local up until 1975. In 1975, Blood Bud would be sold to Amtrak and would be converted into a GT9. Then it'll make about 1,750 horsepower. Now we require that beautiful Blood Bud down there in the late 1990s. We moved to this location and we would see that water. Excuse me, I'm getting the turntable thing there. We require that trial Blood Bud in the 1990s and we're turning to its original back from Shadow and St. Louis Railway Appearance. But it remains the game for the HGT9.
That bridge really uh, crescent line back in the day. Oh, uh, yeah? From, uh, from Biloxi, well, Jackson, Mississippi, all the way up to Tacoa. Well, oh, yeah, I got up to Tacoa. Now we currently do not own this locomotive. It is being leased to us by our very good friends, 